Hey Matt Walker, uh, my name is Rich and uh, I've been watching your videos for quite a while and uh, I've studied with other folks like uh, Ernie and Erica. I spent five weeks in uh, at Wheaton Labs and checked out all the stuff they have going on and I've studied with uh, Deanne Bedner and Uncle Mud and the like. Um, and somehow I've gone through quarantine all up until now and not found your fireside chats and all that stuff so um thank you for doing that and being making yourself available and uh really just helping us all make better awesome burning stoves uh anyways i have a qu few questions for you and i thought i'd make a video and hopefully uh you have the time to check it out so this is my stove and uh heater mass um it's going into a third season now so after two seasons uh, i've been very happy with it and i live out here uh, in a modified pole barn um, so yeah so here it is it's brick and mortar as you can see um, I lifted it up off the ground like this because it's not an insulated slab so that's why I have it uh, with the cinder blocks in the bottom half blocks and then on the inside I have filled it with gravel um, because we don't have much we're on 12 acres here but we don't have much uh, clay and the sand is uh, the opposite of sharp <laughs> so uh, anyways, uh, I did the concrete countertop on there, and I've decided that the uh, gravel just isn't cutting it. So I'm gonna take it out and fill it with cob, and I'm you know gonna bring in some clay and sand to do that. Here's the core and the bell, and up until now, um, it's just been floating. When I originally built it, uh, my intention was to you know follow the Rocket Mass Builder Guide and fill this with perlite and slip and I'm, that is my plan at the moment um, but I just wanted to check with you and these are of course the dense uh, bricks they're not the uh, kiln bricks um, and uh, and you see it's essentially dry fit um, of course when I made this I slipped it all together <coughs> but that quickly um, failed after you know putting logs in and out of there so I've just kind of had this running as a dry fit, this part of it, um, since the beginning, and two seasons now, and it did good, um, but there's certainly a lot of leaks in that, and I think at times it was advantageous uh, to do that. And then here around the bell at the bottom is also open. I did uh, cob it into the bottom, um, but that seal has failed, and I do get a leak around there um, at startup. If I'm doing a cold start, it'll sort of puff out of there uh, for a second or two as the uh, the draw gets established. But after a minute or two, um, things are doing great. Um, but I do want to fill that. And here, <coughs> you'll see I used gravel, and the gravel just didn't interface well. And it's been slouching, and uh, every once in a while you'll hear <coughs> a uh, piece or two of gravel hit the floor. And I've had some mice up in there and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, like I say, I want to cop this in and really get that going. So, but uh, I'm just curious as to what you recommend to uh, to fill my voids here. Um, and then, so that's a question. So this is my living space. And part of that means that I cook in here as well on the stove. And you'll notice that I've got those cinder blocks there. I'm 6'1", but uh, I find I still need a boost to, to get up there to cook comfortably. And even still on that, that step, it's pretty, uh, I'd like to even go higher. Anyways, this works. Um, but what I'm pointing out here is I've got that piece of wood on there, straight edge. And you see there's a bow in the, uh, in the top of the barrel. And the problem with that, I find, is when I'm cooking on it, you know, because I'm not getting that uh, conduction transfer of heat, um, it can take a long time to uh, heat the pan or boil water or that type of thing. Um, but I find, in, uh, in my experience of visiting different stoves throughout the world, that they um, this is a common thing that they um, warp and wobble like that. Um, I've experienced some where when you heat them up, they kind of dong and make a noise and everything like that. Um, so for that reason, I'm considering replacing this barrel, but uh, I don't know any suggestions on how to make this a better cooktop. Um, I was thinking maybe putting a 
a slab of steel on there and letting that heat up a little more consistent better transfer of heat I don't know um, but I'd be curious to hear some thoughts on that so here's another common problem um, so after two seasons of burning I've cracked this top brick uh, in the bridge on top of the burn chamber here uh, right here has cracked well I've replaced it four times this is the fourth one in here now and it's cracked and it seems like this is just gonna crack 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 <laughs> and I, I started researching and thanks to your chats um, I'm a little more versed but still no expert in uh, materials and such um, but yeah it's cracked again and do you replace it or you just leave it do you let it ride and you know being dry fit right now it makes it really easy to get in and out of here to replace it um so i'm a little apprehensive about you know sealing this all up and then having to re replace a you know mortared in fire brick um so i'm looking for an answer there if there is one and when i do my maintenance maintenance this year i'm going to check out the tripwire and see how that's uh, doing. I suspect it's also, um, when I opened it up last time, I did see a small crack into the trip wire as well. So, um, a lot of cracking bri bricks. Do I care? Should I care? Leave them? Don't worry about it? Worry about it? <laughs> uh, any advice is appreciated. Wanted to share another detail of my build, and that is uh, I'm using Arduino um, to measure a thermocouple which I installed at the very top of the heat riser here so I have a high temperature thermocouple fancy thermometer um, that reads uh, the temperature at the top of the heat riser and then uh, right now I'm switching it out uh, so next season I'll be pushing that up to the web uh, that information um, but that allows me uh, to see what's going on and uh, back to my cracked brick issue um, I find that, uh, I think these bricks are rated at 1200 and right when I get to about 1300 or so at the top of the heat riser, um, I've observed after cracking four of them, that's about when it happens. Um, speaking of which, the hottest I've ever seen in this setup is uh, 1440 um, at that location. And so that's kind of par for the course as far as I know. Um, but yeah, and then uh, additionally, I have uh, three temperature sensors in the in the concrete countertop that I poured. So uh, one right there, one in the corner here under the bedroll, and then here in the feet on the bedroll. So I've seen as high as uh, 187 uh, under the bedroll, which is <laughs> quite toasty warm, of course. Um, but over here where I don't cover it up, um, it just... The heat doesn't transfer from that gravel into the the countertop so when I cob it in uh, my plan is to um, really do a loose sort of uh, slip at the very top and then set this countertop on there so it sort of squishes into it and makes a real direct contact and I think that is really gonna improve the performance um, but I have to say I hope it doesn't go hotter than 187 degrees uh, especially right here, right next to the manifold. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting, and I'm sure that the cob is going to retain that heat much longer than the uh, the gravel does. So to summarize, I guess I have our general questions in all that blathering there. <laughs> is One is how to fill in around the firebox, um, what material they use. Uh, should I use the same thing around the bell, or should I get in the cob here? Um, if I do go perlite all the way around, um, when should I start my uh, cob in uh, the manifold area here? Um, second question was uh, about the cracked fire bricks. Uh, should I care about that or not? Um, and when I do put this all together and get it all sealed up, um, how do I replace that in the future? Um, and I guess that's it. Um, but thanks so much for your guidance, Matt. You've been a great uh, resource through all of this, and uh, I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks so much.